Tonight's occasional address is to be delivered by Mr. Carve Finian. Carve started his career as an entrepreneur in the field of information technology, establishing his company in his late teens. The rapid technological developments in the IT industry fascinated Carve, and the release of the first compact disc read-only memory that we know as CD-ROM uh, was the trigger for him to sell his rapidly growing company in the pursuit of his higher education to understand how such technologies were made. After completing a Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering at the, at the Budapest University of Technology and Economics, he continued his education in the field of two-dimensional digital filter design in the Systems and Control Research Group of UNSW School of Electrical Engineering and Telecommunication, which earned him a Master of Engineering by research. He then joined the industry to pursue his ambitions, and he is currently the state sales manager at Pepper, uh, Pepper Earl and Fuchs Process Automata Automation Division. Since 2016, Carve has been serving the UNSW School of Electrical Engineering and Telecommunications as the chair of the Alumni Advisory Committee, and he is currently pursuing his executive MBA at the Australian Graduate School of Management here at UNSW. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mr. Carve Finian. Well, Pro Chancellor Dr. Alexander, DT Deans, Professor Waller, Professor Duncan, faculty members, distinguished guests, and most importantly, graduating students, families, and friends. Good evening and welcome. I also would like to pay my respects and acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which this great institution is situated, both past and present. I'm very humbled and honored to be here tonight and celebrate this milestone with you. You all have to be proud of what you have accomplished. So congratulations not only to you, but to everyone else who supported you along the way and made it possible for you to be here tonight. In preparation for this address, I have been thinking about the things that I learned along the way, and most importantly, things that I wish I had known when I was in your shoes as a fresh graduate. And I realized that the list is pretty long and there is so much that I would like to share with you all. However, my wife believes that you're all so lucky that I'm only given less than 10 minutes for this address. <laughs> and so I've only chosen three of them with the sincere hope that they will help you as you continue your journey through life. So number one, continuous active learning. Your learning should not stop here. Please do not stop here. Thank you. This is a key factor to your future success. Of course, active learning means you actively use each and every situation to learn and grow. At some point in your life, you will be through some tough periods. Take advantage of these tough times for learning and laying the foundations. Active learnings also mean how not to do things. This includes learning, perhaps from a boss who shouldn't be in the role he or she is. Believe me, the chances are you will experience this. And so the learning that how not to do things is as important as learning how to do things. Number two, go for excellence. Anything you do in life, try to do it the best way you can. And every time you try to do this, you increase your abilities. And remember, there is no shortcut to success. This will help you to continue to grow and get better and better at your skills. And as a side effect, it will also help you develop a great reputation. 
and it will make you be in demand. Believe me, it's a great place to be. And number three, network, network, and network. I cannot emphasize how important networking is. The most influential people you will meet in life are the ones with the ability to connect people to each other. And of course, the easiest place to start is this very institution where you have access to a very large network of alumni from all around the globe in different sectors within different industries. So try to connect to them and offer them your help and support if they need it. There will come a day that you will need their help or their expertise. And now to put all of this in perspective, let me quickly share a part of my story with you. I came to Australia in 2006 as a PhD student. After a year of noticing the struggle of my fellow PhD graduates in finding a job within the industry, I decided to downgrade to masters by research and join the industry. And then the struggle to find a job started. But during this time, I still needed to support myself and my family. And so I started to work casually in the hospitality industry in a local club. This period of my life took a lot longer than I hoped for, and I was down and sad with my situation. Little I knew then how valuable the customer service skills I was learning would become later on in my career. And then finally, I got my break and landed my first full-time permanent role. I then was able to rapidly grow in the company, and within just over a year, I was responsible for more than half the budget of the company. This also naturally helped me to develop a good reputation between customers and colleagues until there was a change in the senior management of the company with their values no longer in line with mine. And so despite my passion for the company and its products, I knew it was time for me to move on. And here's the key. It was my reputation that worked to my favor and helped me in securing my next role. This time, when I was approached, I accepted the offer. That was in 2015, and not too long after, our whole industry was hit by the downturn in the oil and gas industry. All the projects were put on hold, and a lot of people lost their jobs. But during this time, amazingly, I was again saved by the same customer service skills that I learned during those tough years struggling to find a job. Basically, a few happy customers agreed to purchase our specialized products and solutions for their general purpose applications. This effectively resulted me in finishing my year above my budget in a year where many in the process industry struggled to even make the previous year's budget. Of course, during all this time, and ever since graduation, I kept in touch with the School of Electrical Engineering and Telecommunication, and this network allowed me to get involved and become a committee member of the school's alumni advisory committee, which then led to me being asked to serve the school as the chair of this committee, which then led to me being involved with the division of the philanthropy, helping with the broader faculty of engineering, which then has led to me to be honored to be here tonight and speak to you all. None of this would have happened if I was not willing to keep in touch with my school and give back to the school that has given so much to me and has been instrumental to who I am today. You are now graduating. You are now part of a great big family. You are now a UNSW alumnus. Be proud and act accordingly. And know that it doesn't end here. 
Do not stop your active learning. Be the best you can be and be involved and lend a helping hand in any way, shape, or form that you can afford to make it even better for the ones after you. After all, together, we are all UNSW. Good luck and God bless you all. Thank you, Carve. Um, graduation ceremonies uh, give us the opportunity to hear the wisdom of an eminent member of society. And on behalf of all assembled here, I express the university's appreciation for your contribution to this, our most important of ceremonies. So ladies and gentlemen, I ask you once again to join me in thanking Mr. Carve Finian. Thank you.